All right, I am building my next frame after this one. So I have my stage, I have four frames so far. I can always run a simple test by just clicking the eyeballs, right? It goes like this, 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 this. Oops. This, 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 this. Now making contact and I have to modify my duplicate of the hand by actually getting rid of this th tip of the thumb so that it looks like it's actually pinching. Like so. I'll use my arrow keys to really push it in there. Doesn't need to be perfect. And I might even sharpen up the hand a little bit, just the edges of it. See how everything's a little soft? That's because as I puppet warp, things get soft too. So I use that smart sharpen to filter very low settings. All right, so to test if this frame looks different, I can always click between my stage and my assets. And yeah, that looks good. So that's my next frame. So what do I do? This is the same process over and over. Once I've set up my next frame in my assets file, I go to layer, flatten image. I dismiss the, the warning, but it's good a good warning to have. So I don't ever click, don't show again. I see in my history that I flattened it. I lost all my assets. That's scary. But I do that so that I can now say select all, command A, edit copy, command C, and then go back in my history before I flatten the image. So I can see all my layers. Then I go to my stage, click on that, and then I do edit paste, command V. And now I have my fifth frame. So you see how quickly that hand moved in. One, two, three, four, five all within just five frames. This tells the story of my first three frames, right? So now on the stage, let me save my work on my assets and on my stage. Now I can run a test animation just of that first section, right? So to do that, I go to window, timeline, and I'm gonna say, click on video timeline, but I don't want a video timeline. I want a frame, frame by frame. So I'll show you that again. When you click on window timeline, you have to click on the, the drop down that comes in and you say frame by frame animation. And then you're going to click on this little window here within the timeline and you're going to say make frames from layers. This is just on your stage, really simplifies things. Then you're going to set the timing for those. I'm going to hold down shift, select all the frames and I'm going to choose 0.3 seconds. That's my usual like GIF animation default frame rate. And it's going to play through forever. And I can just test it and just watch it. Does that make sense? Yes. Except that the hand just disappears. Now, I call it an animation test because I can't leave these open. If I leave these frames open, and I bring new things in, it's really going to mess them up. So I need to now trash the frames. That's not the same as deleting the layers. So you never hit delete. Instead, you select them all and you drag them to the trash. Does not affect your layer at all. Once this is down to just one frame in the timeline, you can turn off the timeline under window because that's just a test. But so far, so good. because all the timeline does is program the opacity of each layer. So you want to make sure they're all at 100%. They're all stacked in the right order. You save it, and now you go back to your assets, and now we're ready to start in the middle. So now, some interesting things happen. I'm going to make a new asset, which is going to be my character cut right here. So that head is now not going to move. It's going to get detached. So I'm going to duplicate just that head. And that body is not going to move. So I'm going to mark these because I need to use them. 
I'll mark the head as red because that will move, but the body will now stay put. And I need this to be a headless body. So this is preparing my assets. Whoops. So I'm going to delete that selection from that layer. Okay, now I'm going to combine this with the hand. So I'll make a duplicate of it just to be safe. Move it up here. Up above everything and then make a duplicate of the hand. So remember you want to keep all the assets that make all of your layers. And now I'm going to merge these two. Command E and I'll mark that red. So now this is all on one layer. Right? Now, for this part, I'm going to start moving it up. Okay. Now I need to build that accordion that goes between. And for that, I go to my assignment folder, because I haven't built this in my assets yet. And I have this, which I thought might be fun to use. So when you're doing something like this, it's best to build it backwards. So I want the biggest extent first, like as tall as this is going to get. And I can transform it and tweak it. This is someone else's work, someone else's pixels, but I got them from Pixabay, so I feel safe using them. And it's just supposed to be kind of goofy and cartoonish. Okay, then I'm going to shrink them down. Okay, now I'm going to put it behind the character's body. And I'm going to cut it off. So I have to rasterize it whenever you're going to delete pixels. Let me turn this off for the moment. Let me just play with the character's head here. So I need to make them kind of fit between. That's about as high as the character's head will ever get. So let's make that accordion fit. I can cut off the top. And this is why we did all those compositing projects before animation, so that it's pretty easy to change this. I actually like that little splash of red there. It's kind of bloody. Maybe I can keep that in. But i got to warp and connect this somehow. Right? Like accordion bellows. So, yeah, I kind of like it. Let's keep playing with it, get a shape I like. That's a little bit better. If I want it to be a little bit crisper and stranger, I can use Smart Sharpen on it. And again, Smart Sharpen, you just go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen, and then you can put your settings in. It's a strong tool, so I, I always keep the settings pretty low. 
So that looks silly and digital, but that's fine. Okay, now I'm going to start reducing it. So I'm going to make a duplicate, and then I'm going to transform it, and I'm going to move it lower. on the duplicate while holding down shift just like that like one step and then I'm gonna move the head down with it now the way to keep that consistent is to actually merge them together So what I'm going to do is take these two layers and merge them. Command E. So now they're on the same layer. So now when I duplicate it and I transform it, uh, I can't do that. Never mind. Because I don't want the head to shrink. I just want the bellows to shrink. So you, you think it through. You have to make a plan. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is shrink it down, shrink the bellows. And then what I can do is use guides to help show me where it is. Okay, it locks there. I'm going to use my guide to stick right there. And then command semicolon to see the guide. Then I'm going to duplicate the head. And I'm going to move the head down to stick right there. Yep, so that works. So this is tricky. I'm basically doing those ones together and then these ones together. And now I duplicate both of those and I do it again. Command T. This is also how you would animate kind of camera moves to keep them really even. You use guides as steps. Lock it there. And you just have to like think it all through. Duplicate. Oh, I gotta move the guide first. Fix at the top. And bring the duplicate of the head down. Till it sticks. So this would be third stage. Then I duplicate it again. And I bring it down. So a little bit faster towards the bottom, a little bit more space. And then I duplicate the head. And bring that down. All right, now where do I have the head? There it is. So I'm going to move this now. To match that position, good. So it's now this frame to this frame. I'll get rid of the guides. This frame to this frame. Now I have to decide, do I want to move the body a little bit? I think I do. So I'm going to now take the headless body, duplicate it, and puppet warp it. So all the thinking of all the different components. 
But now I don't need to worry.